there in your go to webinar control panel there should be a box that says questions and there and especially when we get to the end for the Q and A section, that's where you type them in. If maybe, you know, one of you can just let me know that you can actually hear the audio, that'd be great. Oh, great. I see that. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, we've got quite a few attendees online already, but we want to make sure that we have enough time to go through all the material and, and go ahead and uh, get everybody's questions in. So thank you guys for joining very much. Um, obviously, you have an interest um, either in cool roofing itself and, and energy efficiency or, or on-sets products. Um, so I think by going through this, you'll, you'll get a good appreciation for both sides. Um, so my name is Chris Walker. I'm with a company called RoofPal, uh, based in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, the folks there at Onset have asked me to put together this presentation to talk about this case study that we had done and, and in the process used uh, one of their products. And we wanted to go ahead and give some free information for folks who wanted to learn more. So why don't we go ahead and get started. So here, just a quick background on, on the project itself. So the Arizona Cool Roof Council uh, had approached me when I was working for a, a local roofing company called Stark Weather Roofing to do some kind of a case study that would compare the energy efficiency of two different buildings, basically to you know create findings um, locally from a local company and a, a job that was done here in the state uh, to to be able to you know prove whether or not white roofs are more energy efficient than non-white roofs. And they really didn't give us a, a ton of parameters other than you know basically that. Um, and without giving away the ending, as a result of the study, you know, we, we do feel like we've got you know, factual evidence proving that you know, white roofs and, and roofing systems in general can play a key role in energy efficiency. If you want to learn more about the Arizona Cool Roof Council, you can find them online at azcoolroof.com and starkweatherroofing at, at starkweatherroof.com. The roof system that we'll talk about that was, that was used in, in the white roof building um, is a system from Polyglass called the, it's a Polycool line of products that they have. Um, the specific system that we used, um, the, the, the top cap sheet had a, an SRI value of 84. And for anybody who may be familiar, you know, that's not really high. It does meet all of the standards and is considered a cool roof. But there are materials that can be used that, that give much more uh, energy efficiency than that. And, and as if you're in a position where you're considering doing something like that, you really want to look for a minimum of 90 and, and, and really getting into more of the 100 range on that solar reflective index. And we'll talk a little bit about that more later on. Um, you know, the systems, you know, like, like all roofing systems, you would expect it's highly watertight and durable, and it meets all the current proposed energy performance standards through Energy Star, the Cool Roof Rating Council, and it meets California's Title 24 requirements. And then, obviously, to get more information, you go to polyglass.com. A uh, quick word about Onset. So they actually make the data loggers that we use to measure the, the temperatures for the study. And they are the leader in portable data loggers. They've been around for a long time, 30 years. Um, they've sold over 1.5 million Hobo brand data loggers. And, and they've got different products for a wide range of environments. Um, so we used one of them, but they, they really have uh, a nice range of, of products to offer. And you can learn more about that at onsetcomp.com. So we really wanted to create conditions that would make for, for as close to a perfect study as possible. So we had a, a job that we had done for the Nationwide Insurance, their, their corporate headquarters, which is in Scottsdale, Arizona, in a, in a big uh, uh, office park. And uh, big job. We got a lot of great publicity with that. And so and we had a good relationship with the, the facilities management over there, as well as the folks who manage the building next door, which is an identical building. Um, it just had the old roof system. So we thought, this is great. They're side by side. Um, the only thing different between the two is the roofing system. So as you can see with the pictures here on this slide, you know, the similarities you know, are pretty obviously. They're in the same corporate plaza. They have the same matching concrete roof deck. The building shape and size are, are virtually the same. They're exposed to the identical weather conditions. The difference is the roof. So we thought this is perfect. 
Now, what was different between the two on the nationwide building, the white roof, um, when we re-roofed that, it, we had put in a 3-inch R19 ISO board for the insulation, and then the poly roof, uh, the polycool roof system, which had the Elastiflex you know, base sheet and then the polycool light cap sheet. And again, with that SRI value of 84, um, it's good, not fantastic. The existing building next door had four inches of R20 roof insulation, so better insulation. It had a black ballasted EPDM roof, and it was covered with two inches of river rock. And I'll actually show you what that looks like up close here on the next slide. Um, so you can kind of see the difference in the roof systems. And these really are truly the only, the only difference. You get very similar occupancy rates. Uh, they're you know, the exact same air handling systems. So these were really the key differences. So the role that the Hobo data loggers had played, we used specifically the Hobo U12 data loggers. And if you go to their website on, on onsetcomp.com, you can find these. Um, we used those to record the roof surface temperatures as well as the stairwell temperatures. And, and we'll get into more of, of exactly why that was. But you can see here in the pictures on the white building, um, you know, placing that, you know, in, in, in if you were to be able to zoom out, you would see this is, you know, center in the building as much as possible, um, away from the walls, away from, you know, shadows um, as much as possible. Um, and then the middle picture there with all of that river rock and digging underneath to get down to the actual roof. And then in the stairwell, we actually placed the, uh, the, the part of the, the data logger unit um, that actually captures and stores the information and the sensors go off from there. Um, the data logger that we used, you know, it's got the 12 bit resolution, so really accurate, um, huge memory. Um, you know, we collected a lot of data for a whole month and it didn't come close to filling that up. Very portable. The actual unit itself is about the size of your, your computer's mouse. Um, very small. Uh, programmable push button start. You literally, once you've got it set up, um, you just go ahead and hit a button to start and, and you're good to go. Uh, when you're ready to download it, there's a USB cable, plugs right your computer, starts downloading it, the battery lasts a year, and it works with their, their uh, proprietary software that you can use for graphing and analysis of data, which works out really nice too. Uh, the time interval, so we took measured temperatures every hour, 24 hours a day for a full month, so specifically from August 6th to September 4th, 2009. There is a chart there, and we'll get more into you know, some of the, the data and the analysis itself. But um, so we were collecting quite a bit of data. Um, the placement of the data loggers, again, this was you know, on the roof, you know, away from everything, under the exact roofing materials, so we weren't getting the direct sunlight. <coughs> and you can see both the white roof and the black roof. And then we recovered the black roof with the river rock. Um, and then in the stairwells, we went into the low traffic, non-air conditioned stairwells, and they're three feet away from the roof, roof hatch. And so what that would do is then collect you know, the radiant temperature that comes through the roof deck and, and would help us understand the energy efficiency when heat was transferred into the building so we can get both the surface temperature and, and the, the, the temperature inside. So the good news about energy efficiency. So what we found was that the polycool roof, you know, it did provide lower roof surface temperatures, lower interior building temperatures, limited to really no thermal shock. And, and we'll get into what thermal shock is for those who aren't as familiar. And obviously then the increased energy efficiency. So thermal shock, um, basically the polycool building temperatures remained more constant than the other building did. And, and, and again, this is that same chart that you saw before. Over a 24-hour period, the stairwell temperatures you know, inside the building were 3.75 times more extreme than the, the white building stairwells. And, and as you can see with the green line down here, really, there was hardly any variation. So what you see is the black line was the average over the 24-hour you know, period, hour by hour, the outside ambient temperature. The red line is, is in the, the EPDM building, the, the black roof building. And then the green line is the white roof building. And you can see there's just really no variation, you know, a, a you know, degree or two up and down. So what thermal shock really is, it's, it's when you have a rapid change in temperature, you get that quick expanding and contracting, and, and that will wear down you know, the, the building itself, it'll, it'll impact the way you have to heat and cool your building, so on and so forth. So um, 
that kind of gives you an idea of, of that thermal shock. The increased energy efficiency. So, you know, over the course of a 24-hour day, you know, day and night, the white roof building, the polycool roof, uh, the surface temperature was, you know, 4.62 percent cooler than the other building overall. During the business day, kind of the eight to five in midsummer, the surface temperatures were nearly seven percent cooler. And at the very hottest, you know, point of the day. Uh, the, the, the white roof building you know, was 8.49, almost 8.5 percent cooler. So again, going back to you know, the conditions that were involved, the materials that we used weren't you know, having the, the utmost uh, you know, SRI value for reflectivity, but you could see this, this was making a big difference and, and uh, you, know, would, then you would assume would translate into you know, lower cooling costs. Inside the stairwell, so heat that's being transferred into the building, again, you know, really consistent. What this chart, chart is showing you, the green line is the white building, obviously, and this is hour by hour on average how much change in temperature happens. So if it, if it went up a degree in an hour, you'd see it go up from you know, one more line. So you can see on, on the green one, really you have no more than half a degree difference changing from one hour to the next. But in the, the black roofed building, you can see that there's a, a much greater you know, rate of change in the fluctuation. So you know, it, temperatures are changing through, throughout the day, um, and it's directly coming right through you know, that, that big concrete roof deck uh, and right into the building and then affecting you know, the, the equipment used to, to keep the building cool. Um, so our guess was this was going to reduce the kilowatt usage for, for cooling the building, and, and it really did. It actually reduced it by 7.79%. Um, so going from August of 2008, we were able to get their utility bill for the, the nationwide building, the, the white roof. They had previously used 719,000 kilowatts, and then the following year it went down to 663. So that was a savings of, of you know, $5,450 to the big building. Um, what we were able to find out, all other factors remain constant. Nothing was changed about the building. The occupancies changed the same. The only difference was the roof system, which was great. And so the facilities uh, technician, the lead guy there at, at the nationwide building, had, had given us this nice quote, uh, basically saying that they you know, were showing a consistent monthly drop in their kilowatt usage. Um, and that he was estimating before seeing the data that it was probably about 50,000, and it was just slightly over that, which was a good guess by him, um, that their building AC demand had dropped tremendously, that their cooling tower load had decreased so much that they rarely had all four towers online. And for those folks who, who do facilities work, and you get a sense of how all that is, is run, um, with the old roof, they were using all four towers from June to October just to you know, satisfy the demand, and now they hardly ever have that fourth tower online. So, you know, that makes a huge difference in terms of your energy consumption and then just the wear and tear on your equipment as well. Um, so overall, what we were really able to define was that even with, you know, what we might consider in this situation uh, a worst case scenario in terms of the materials, the building construction, um, so on and so forth, that we could see an obvious difference with you know, a white roof to a non-white roof. Um, you know, it, it affected the thermal shock, the energy efficiency, the roof surface temperature, which you know, can then lead to deterioration of, of the equipment. The people have to work up there, all the different technicians. Um, it makes a difference. Um, in the actual case study itself, which I plan on sending out after this webinar to everyone, um, where it gets in a lot more detail for anybody who's interested to see that. It gives a lot more data on you know, the actual surface temperatures and, and you, know, you, could, you could see how extreme it got. I believe without looking cheating with my notes that on the Black Roof building, it was actually getting up to near 180 degrees on the surface during the hottest point of the day. I think if you have to work out there in that, <coughs> pardon me, but the, the difference with um, with the white roof building, although it's it's bright and you need sunglasses on there, it's so much cooler. When we were actually setting up the data loggers, um, we did it on the white roof building first, and you know, you know it's warm and it's bright, and we got to the other roof and it was just unbearable, and um, huge difference. I mean, you could just feel it, and now we have the data to, to back that up. And if we were to redo the study using 
you know, a, a hundred SRI value, you know, roof coating or other roofing materials, um, you know, I think the numbers would be, you know, significantly more uh, obvious uh, of, of the benefits of doing this. You know, does it actually pay for itself? Not right away, but if you do need a re-roof building and you're in an extreme climate like Arizona or somewhere in, 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 a, in a warm desert type climate, um, that's definitely a way to offset a lot of those costs because you're going to see the energy efficiency. And I guess the, the, the opposite would be true if you're in a really cold climate. You might actually want to go with, you know, with a black roofed building. Um, and I'll send out, you know, an email after this webinar and, and give you this information, the data that we actually pulled from the data loggers. You can see that. And, and some other interesting information about cool roofing and, and some things that are out there. And if anybody was to have any follow-up questions, obviously you can contact me anytime. Um, but really, at, you know, overall, that was, you know, what we wanted to, to present was, you know, a very high-level executive summary of uh, what the study was about without getting into all the, the, the really low-level details. But we do want to open up to any questions. Um, and again, there's that, that question box in your, your GoToWebinar control panel. Um, prior to the webinar, a few people had sent in some, some questions. So we'll go ahead and start with that, but give you guys time to go ahead and start typing your questions, and then I'll go through and, and answer them um, in the order that they come in. Um, so we'll start with a few of the questions that, that came in previously. Um, so a gentleman named Rowan from the, the Nile Center for Alternative Technology, looks like he may be um, well outside the U.S., but he had asked, you know, how does the degree of white impact heat absorption, uh, otherwise you know, energy efficiency, and do small additions of color like an off-white or you know, maybe even a cream make significant rise in the surface temperature? So really the short answer to that is, yeah, pure white is going to be the best. And it's not just the color, but it, it's what makes up the materials. Uh, but to be considered a cool roof, the reflectivity needs to be a minimum of 70%. Uh, and, and so only a pure white or an off-white or some really light cream colors would actually meet the, you know, the standards from Energy Star and the Cool Roof Rating Council and, and things like that. Um, you know, and typically like a beige color, you know, gravel roof or, or the white shingle granules that you might see on some houses uh, or the silver sheen uh, ones, the maximum you're ever going to get out of that is maybe 65%. So, you know, to be really considered a cool roof, you're, you're looking at, at that 70% reflectivity and looking for the white or off-white or really light green color. So I hope that answered, um, you know, that question on there. Um, he actually had a second question, too, was about, you know, if surface texture makes a difference. And it does. Um, even when you do a a coating with the granules in there, and, and the reason you would do that is if you don't want it really snuck on the roof and you want to give it some kind of traction. Um, technically, they, what they've found from the manufacturers that have done studies is, is that if it's not a flat, continuous white, um, you start to see a degradation in, in how well it, it, it reflects the, the sunlight. Um, so, you know, yeah, it does make a difference. It would be very slight if it was just a white coating with some small granules in it, but but it could actually make a difference. And then a gentleman named Allen, who's a facilities manager with a with a bank, he had asked um, if the roofs in the study have parapet walls and if the readings, you know, basically the location of the readings, making sure that um, you know the reflections off those walls would make a difference. Um, I'm hoping that you got to see Al in, in the pictures that we were able to back off away from there. Um, what I'll do is let me go back to a, a bigger picture. And I don't know if you can see my mouse cursor or not, but in the lower right-hand corner where that kind of upside down U makes a difference, is, is directly into the center as possible is where the roof hatch is, and that's where the measurements were being taken. So this was quite a bit away from uh, the parapet walls, and we don't believe that that had any effect um, on, on our, our temperatures being taken. So I hope that answered your question. Um, so those are the questions that were submitted beforehand, and we've got some questions that have popped up. So uh, we've got a question from, from Ted who had asked, uh, you know, what was the cost per square foot of the cool roof installation? Um, Ted, I'm going to have to get back to you on that, and I, I can get that information. 
overall, and you can kind of get a sense of the size of this building, I believe the total cost was somewhere in the neighborhood of about $200,000 for everything. And that included all of the tear off um, and, and then re-roofing the whole thing. But if you had a, and we can follow up via email or something, but if you had a specific question about you know, the cost of materials, it may be different in different regions and it may depend on your relationship with the suppliers but I can get you a ballpark that would kind of give you an idea. And, and actually what I plan to do is maybe just collect all these questions and answers and send them out to everyone. Um, so I'll get more on that. And then you had also asked what percent savings over the annual cost was the estimated 50,000 kilowatt hours. So from there, so what we had, and I hope you saw that in the presentation itself, but let's go back to that slide um, where we had talked about that. So you can actually see, so it was 719,000 kilowatt hours before, and we took 50,000 off of that. And so, you know, if we do, you know, the quick math, we can, we can figure out, um, divided by 719. So that looked like that was about a 7%, um, you know, savings for kilowatts. Now, obviously, year to year, your uh, utility company will will change their rates, uh, and so we wanted to really keep it, you know, down to the kilowatts. But just to give you an idea, it, for them that year, that was a savings of almost fifty five hundred dollars. Um, Patrick is asking, you know, what is a typical cleaning schedule to maintain the the solar reflective and the you know the SRI value? Really, really good question, Patrick. Um, when you're when, a, when whoever you use for your roofing contractor talks to you about general maintenance and roof cleaning, it's a real thing. Um, they're, they're not just trying to, to make more money off of you. Beyond just clearing out the, the gutters and the crickets um, so to make sure that the drainage is working properly and, and clearing out all of the, the, the little valleys, um, actually going through and power washing it is a really good idea. The cleaner you've got it, the, the better it is. Dust is going to build up. Um, other debris will build up, and it would impact the energy efficiency. Plus, it, it really affects the drainage, and then that's where you know you could speed up the process to start getting leaks. So, you would want to do this every at least once a year. Um, a lot of roofers would recommend every six months. It would depend on you know if there are trees overhanging. You know, if you have somebody go up there every once in a while and give you an idea of how dirty it is, um, depending on where you live and 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 what's around the building. You may want to do it every six months, but at least once a year I would ask for a roof to be clean. And they will usually do it for anywhere between one and two cents a square foot in most cases. I hope that answers your question, Patrick. Um, Michael is asking, in terms of heating degree days or cooling degree days, is there a general level which you would or would not recommend a cool white roof? You know, that's a really good question. So obviously in, in the Phoenix area, um, in places like you know Houston or you know even Los Angeles, you know Las Vegas, um, and then other places around the world where it does get extremely hot, um, I, I would say, uh, yeah, if, if you're seeing an average of you know 90 to 100 degrees during the 100-day summer, I mean this is something that's really going to work out, and I, I can see if there's specific recommendations out there. Um, and then you know on the flip side, if if you're in you know, Buffalo, New York, or in, in Anchorage, Alaska, or, you know, Minneapolis, or something like that, where it's really cold, obviously a dark roof would work out good. Um, one of the links that I'm going to send out with the follow-up email um, is going to talk about a technology that's being developed at MIT over in Boston, um, where they've actually developed a product that would actually change color um, depending on the outside temperature from pure black to pure white and shades of gray in between. And it actually reacts to um, the, the ambient temperature. It's really something else. And they figured out how to make it. They can't figure out how to make it at a cost that would be conducive to selling it commercially. Um, but the idea being that you know your outside temperature does affect your um, energy efficiency. So you would want to do that. I hope that answered your question. So the next question was coming in from Brian. The question was, any information, for examples, 
out of New York State. Some say the black roofs might be better for the winter here versus summer months. Any feedback? So I think that kind of follows into that question as well. And Brian, I hope um, that we've kind of addressed that. Yeah, New York, I know it does get hot in the summertime, and especially because of the humidity. Um, but in the, the wintertime, it's so cold that you're right. Maybe, maybe a, a cool roof, per se, wouldn't be the best um, situation there. And you know, maybe something like what the folks at MIT are developing, where you can have extremes on both sides, would be something, if they were ever commercially available, would be something that would be better to look into. Um, Patrick is following up with, uh, is the 7.8% kilowatt savings only for summer months? What are their winter impacts? Really good question. Yeah, this study was looking specifically at the summer months. Um, obviously, in the winter time right now, so we're in the first day of March, and it's 75 degrees outside. It's not that bad. Um, even on our coldest days, when the high is maybe you know, 40, 42, um, yeah, obviously, there's there's very little impact there. And actually, there are times where, believe it or not, we actually turn on our heaters. Um, and so that, you know, I guess, could have somewhat of an adverse impact. But I, I really don't think that that um, you know, would be the case too much in this kind of a climate. Um, you know, Really, when you get into cool roofing, what you're really looking at are, are, are the hotter climate areas. If you're you know, somewhere that really doesn't get anywhere near 100 degrees, this probably wouldn't be right for you. Um, you know, just in that sense. I mean, it, it may not be right. If you have to re-roof anyway, and, and this is something that you, you know, think would be more beneficial than a black roof, then you know, this would be a good choice to make if you have to do it anyway. I wouldn't just go out and re-roof a building simply because you want to get some energy efficiency savings. Um, that, that wouldn't be the way to go. And I hope that answered your question, Patrick. Do we have any other questions from anyone? Is there any other comments or I'll give a second here in case anybody's typing anything. Um, but overall, I mean that was um, that was the you know the presentation itself. Um, I hope everybody you know enjoyed that. Uh, I, you know, we really had a good time actually putting together the study. We we're really appreciative of the folks at Onset for asking us to do this webinar. Um, I'll go ahead and, and send out information to everybody afterwards with um, some of the follow-ups to the questions and, and more detailed answers where that you know was needed. Um, and if you think of any other questions at any point, feel free to, to give us a um, give me an email. My email address is right there. And uh, you know, really appreciate your guys' time. Thank you guys so much, and we'll uh, talk to you down the roof, or <laughs> talk to you down the road sometime. Oh wait, there was one more question. For everybody wants to hang on. This is, this is coming from Rowan. One of the graphs seemed to show that the polycool roof didn't allow a reduction in temperature during the evening. Is that the case? So Rowan, if you're still on the line. Um, Try and find out which graph this might may have been. Ron, was it this particular graph right here? I don't know if you're still on or able to type in in the question box. Yes, that's the one. So yeah, basically what this graph is showing is that there really wasn't any variation. It didn't heat up during the day when it was getting hot outside, and it didn't <coughs> cool off tremendously at night either. You could see a little bit of spike early in the morning around 8 o'clock when the sun was really coming out, and again at the end of the day when it's at the hottest at 5 o'clock, but we're talking less than or as much as half a degree. And then as the sun set, it would cool off as much as half a degree and then go back to where it was. So keeping the stability of the temperature prevented you know, the thermal shock right there and also affects you know, the air conditioning. It wasn't kicking on and off all day because the, the, the interior of the building is, is heating up and cooling off. Um, you were able to keep it really steady. And as far as I know, and I'm not an expert, but I believe with air conditioning systems, they kind of say, you know, pick a temperature and keep it at that. Um, and I think that this, this would apply. So I, I think that's actually a good thing. Um, was that your sense of with your question there? Or? So 
I hope that that may have answered that. I, I wanted to make sure that you know that you looked at that as a positive thing because we definitely did. Um, so we've got a few more questions coming in on the line. Let me go ahead and get to the next one. So Danielle, uh, what was the calculation used to determine the drop of 7.79 percent using utility bills? Um, so really, what we did was we said, you know, how what was the kilowatt reduction divided by the, the previous amount? Um, and that's how we came up with that. Um, I hope that that seems straightforward. And, and like I, I said, Daniel, I'll, I'll go ahead and send out all of the detailed data. And if you want to play around with that, um, I definitely wasn't a math major. But <laughs> we actually did have a, um, we had sent all the raw data without any of our findings or assumptions or even letting them know which building was which. And we sent it to a statistics professor at a local university to just get his unbiased kind of blind opinion on here's here's two buildings with temperature data. Can you you know let us know what you thought if there's anything statistically significant um, in the the full detailed case study is um, his reaction to all of that. And he did indeed find that there was a statistical difference between the two buildings and he had given a lot of great calculations which was fantastic. Um, Jamie or Jaime, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, I'm sorry if I butchered the name. Um, so I just noticed a few minutes ago due to problems with the login uh, from a Mac. I'm sorry. So yeah, we can get you out the presentation. I'm sorry that you're not actually seeing that and, and so we'll go ahead and um, you know, make sure you get a, a copy of, of these slides as well as the, the full presentation, the data, and everything like that. Um, to Rowan, following back up, I was just wondering uh, if it would be good to let it cool during the evening. I see your point. Um, yeah, if you could you know, somehow allow cool air to come in, I think that that then becomes kind of a building construction issue. We're trying to keep the heat out, but then how do you at night let in the cool air? Um, you know, yeah, what we were trying to do is go for obviously, you know, consistency and keeping whatever the temperature was outside from impacting it at all. It would be interesting to go back in the wintertime and do this exact same study and see what the difference was during cold temperatures with these roof systems. Uh, and that might actually be something I might broach with Stark Weather Roofing and, and Nationwide Insurance just to see if, if the opposite, you know, the opposite time of the year has any effect. Um, Al has, uh, yeah, so he wants to know if the slides are available for printing later. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get you a copy of the slides. Not a problem. Um, great. Everybody else is just confirming that we're getting the questions answered. So that's good. Did anybody else have any other questions or, or comments, concerns? Um, you know, I really you know appreciate everybody's time and, and, and interest in this. And you know, we found it to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, putting the study together, and it's gotten some some good. Um, you know, eyeballs and, and web traffic and questions into the folks that were involved, and, including Onset and Stark Weather Roofing and the Cool Roof Council. And um, so this is something we definitely look to do again and in a different way. Um, and you know, like we were saying, maybe do a winter version of this uh, just to see you know what it comes out with. And if we do do that, then we'll go ahead and post it on our website. And um, you know, we can even you know send it out to this distribution list. Uh, and I've got that. So great. If there's no other questions, then we'll go ahead and, and close this down. Um, we would definitely expect soon, if not, you know, within, definitely within the next 24 hours, to see an email from me. And if you think of any other questions, you know, feel free to contact me anytime. Thank you guys very much.